On this trip, I started out late one morning for the Panamint Dunes on the western edge of Death Valley National Park. This is a rarely photographed dune field as it requires a bone-jarringly bumpy drive up nearly six miles of an unmarked jeep trail to a remote wilderness trailhead followed by four miles of uphill cross-country hiking across unmarked desert to reach the dunes. Most people are put off by the difficulty and isolation of these dunes and never visit them as a result, but these were some of the very reasons I was drawn to this magnificent place. The first time I visited Death Valley National Park was back in 2015. As someone who grew up exploring the wooded forests of the American Northeast, I remember being blown away by the vastness of this wild desert landscape. The towering snow-capped mountain ranges soar to over 11,000 feet, sandwiching vast ancient lake beds spanning hundreds of square miles. In places like these, I can feel just a hint of the magnitude of perspective that wilderness offers. It is here that we realize just how small we truly are, and in that, we find a sense of peace. The silence and solitude here must be experienced to be believed. They rattle the soul and shake the psyche to its core. To explore this place alone is to confront your deepest fears and most hidden self-doubts. In the vastness of the desert, a still small voice calls to us. We must only learn to listen. I've arrived at my starting point for today. You see those hikers over there. They're the only other two people out here. And we're all going to the dunes uh, to spend the night way out there. Uh, and I'm kind of shocked that there's any other humans out here because it is vast. We're in the middle of nowhere. So uh, yeah, we're gonna be going out to these dunes out here, which are about four miles from the nearest Jeep trail and uh, going to try and shoot some large format 8x10 black and white photos on the Intrepid 8x10 and uh, spend the night uh, setting up a camp out there and then photograph sunrise in the morning also on the 8x10 and then head back here to the truck uh, carrying about 50 pounds of weight on my pack the entire time. Uh, man, you know it's ultralight backpacking gear but uh you know ben horn was saying the 50 pounds is the lightest he's been able to get his 8x10 pack so far and now i see why because once you add full video production gear to your large format 8x10 photography setup with all your film holders and lenses and everything uh to do this sort of old-fashioned traditional photography um it's really bulky so but uh, hopefully it'll be fun i better get moving because i've got about an hour and a half to two hours to hike that before sundown. So let's go. It's heavy. This is a 75 liter pack, the Ultralight Adventure Equipment Catalyst. And uh, I've got an 8x10 camera and two lenses and two tripods and two video cameras and overnight gear and food and water. It's gonna be a long hike. <laughs> Conditions in Death Valley tend to be unpredictable and this trip would be no exception. On the morning I left, a check of the most reliable weather stations available showed only mild breezes in the forecast for the next few days. However, some friends and fellow large format landscape photographers had just returned from the park and warned me of fierce winds that made photography nearly impossible. I'd hoped the winds would die down by the time I arrived, but just in case they stuck around, I brought a fully enclosed ultralight tent, a scent of extra large stakes to hold it down, my 10 degree backpacking quilt, and a full set of technical clothing layers. I'd use everything and it would all take a beating. Death Valley tends to be hard on gear and people alike, and this trip would be no exception. Because I frequently adventure alone, I carry GPS navigation and a two-way SATCOM device. 
and I'm extra careful to properly research conditions and terrain. This is especially crucial out here. This is the part where I ask myself, why did I think that it was a good idea to try and lug 50 pounds worth of camera gear and backpacking gear uh, across the desert for four miles each way uh, by myself. It's exhausting. It's really, really hard. And I'm like only halfway or something there. It's pretty insane. I guess the good news is that the truck is a basically imperceivable speck on the distant horizon. And the dunes, oh yeah, they're still really distant on the horizon. So yeah, I'm just wandering across the desert, in the middle of nowhere, by myself, with 50 pounds of camera gear. I will say though, Dang, is it beautiful out here. Incredible. And you really couldn't ask for better weather. It's about 64 degrees, sunny, very light breeze, but not enough to move a camera. It's supposed to be a low of 48 tonight. And uh, <laughs> I brought a 10 degree sleeping bag and a full tent, so I should be quite warm. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing. To be honest, I almost want to get the photography over with just so that I can change out of the sweaty clothes and lay down in my tent and relax. Watch a movie on my phone and uh, chill out for the evening. So, it just occurs to me that I only brought one hot meal. Uh, whoops. <laughs> so, <laughs> I meant to bring two. Um, got plenty of food, no worries about that. So I guess I'll just have to decide whether I want to eat my breakfast skillet for breakfast or for dinner. I'm a tough call. Is, uh, now it's all uphill. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Gotta try this. It's amazing. I will say the, the light is phenomenal. I just hope I can capture some of it on photos in addition to video. I've been doing photography on a professional level for about 13 years, making around 2 million images. For the last seven years, I've been focused exclusively on fine art landscape photography. A few years ago, I decided my images weren't really living up to the look that I had envisioned, and that most of the images I, that did have the look I envisioned had all been created on large format analog film rather than the digital tools that I was using. I decided to make a drastic change in my work and drop digital photography entirely, moving back to film working my way up from medium to large format, starting with 4x5 and eventually landing on 8x10. The cameras I now use are known as field cameras, a type of traditional view camera. Mine are made from lightweight birch and bamboo wood and are the lightest in the world. They contain no electronics or batteries and are essentially a lightproof box. As such, they demand a precise understanding of photographic process paired with absolute focus. This creates an immersive, visceral experience that can be almost meditative when practiced. I'm here to shoot these beautiful sand dunes behind me. And they're amazing, but it's one of those things where they say, look behind you. 
and, and honestly, like the light on these on these mountains, like the Panamint Range, is just so spectacular right now. You have these layers, and it's been changing every few minutes. These layers of light here that just constantly change and rise and fall on the mountain, and they form these just incredible textures and patterns. And then these light, incredibly beautifully lit clouds right here. So I've got the uh, Intrepid set up. Yeah, a little bit awkwardly, but uh, I managed to make three exposures so far. Uh, I shot doubles, uh, Delta 100 and Arista 100 on this scene, metered it carefully. And then I also shot a uh, scene right here on these mountains behind me with the valley just going off and with telescope peak uh, visible in the distance. And then I also shot or a little bit earlier a photo of this scene uh, right here behind me when those dunes were illuminated by the sun. Uh, right there. And so that's one, two, three, four exposures inside of maybe 10, 15 minutes. Uh, so just moving around this one area here, which I'm really happy with because I was super nervous. I wasn't able to get the photos uh, tonight because of the light changing just so fast. So I'm going to keep working, seeing what I can do and uh, we'll see what happens. And then I'm going to make camp for the night. So this is the scene that I've been shooting and honestly, it's just mind blowing. The only thing that's uh, unfortunate is that I didn't bring enough film. I only brought eight sheets. So I brought, I already shot like five sheets, right? No, six, six. Oh, I shot five sheets and then I lost one, unfortunately to a mistake which means I'm down to two sheets and I'm supposed to shoot sunrise tomorrow. I have two sheets of film. So that means that I have to stop shooting this and hope, fingers crossed, that I've managed to capture it properly. Um, I think I have. I did shoot three different exposures on this scene. So uh, I really hope it turns out, but I have no idea. It's really scary. So anyway, I just really hope this comes across on video. I took photos, digital photos of it. I shot a bunch of video footage and I hope that that captures this evening. I could not have picked a better night to come out here. The light is phenomenal. It is mind blowing in every direction. I'll try and show you again in a minute. It is just unreal out here. The light is spectacular. Um, so I've made uh, exposures on Ilford Delta 100 and Arista EDU Ultra 100, uh, which is kind of a cheaper film that works pretty well. Um, both were shot at box and I uh, metered it. The scene was one quarter second um, and I think it'll work. So yeah, it's just, uh, did I get any mistakes or light leaks or camera shake or did I mess up on my mo camera movements? You know, those are kind of the things I worry about a lot. But uh, I don't know. If anything else, it's just been a tremendous blessing to be out here. I mean, it is totally silent and utterly beautiful out here. Fantastic place to spend a night and a day, a sunrise and a sunset. So uh, I'm going to try and show you some more footage and uh, make camp soon. As the evening continued to unfold, the light and colors only got better and better. Death Valley can be a breathtakingly beautiful place, and in this evening, it put on one of those sunsets where it would be difficult to imagine wanting to be anywhere else. As I relaxed and watched the sun go down, the air was perfectly still and the atmosphere silent. It gave no indication of the winds that my friends had spoken of. I made camp on the sand at the outskirts of the dune field, staking out my tent carefully just in case winds picked up. As soon as the sun had disappeared below the horizon, a light breeze began to stir. I made a hot meal, got comfortable, and watched a movie on my phone with headphones in my tent. By about 8 or 9 p.m., the breeze had picked up to a 15 or 20 mile an hour wind, which fluttered the tent and blew gusts of sand under its edges, beginning to cover my gear with a layer of powder. 
By the time the movie ended, the winds had begun to howl and increase to an intimidating gale. By 11 p.m., I knew I had a decision call to make. Either pack up and make an emergency evacuation, hiking the four miles back across the open desert to my truck in the pitch dark, or hunker down and risk my tent being blown over or damaged by gale force winds and blowing sand in excess of 40 miles an hour. I decided my tent could handle it, and I emerged to re-pitch it into extreme storm mode designed for hailstorms. I pitched it very low with all edges touching the ground and pounded the stakes all the way in below the surface. Due to its design, I was able to lower the height of my trekking poles, which support the roof, and close everything down tight. I also stretched my rain jacket across the doorway to further block the sand before putting in my earplugs and drifting off to sleep to the sound of the dunes being remade. The following three images represent each of the unique compositions that I created on the evening of day one. Of the five total sheets, that I exposed, all five were successful and came out exactly as I'd envisioned. While I do wish I'd been able to bring some color film with me on this backpacking trip, I feel the black and white images lend a quiet, timeless feel that captures a bit of the dramatic light that makes this place so special. Fierce winds and all, day one of my 2018 trip to Death Valley National Park had been a success and an experience I won't soon forget. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my channel as I'll be posting more from this trip soon, as well as a host of other related content on photography, hiking, adventure, and other related topics. Thanks for watching, and until next time, stay curious.